Repairman Val McKee and Earl Bassett are tired of their dull lives in the small desert town of Perfection, Nevada. But just as the two try to skip town, they happen upon a series of mysterious deaths and a concerned seismologist studying unnatural readings below the ground. With the help of an eccentric couple, the group fights for survival against giant worm-like monsters hungry for human flesh. Hey folks, man, this is Monk, and we're back with another episode of Classes of Cinematics. And I'm joined as always with my co-host, we got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo! <laughs> Yeah, folks, man, so we got a really cool one today, man. We're going to be talking about the cult classic Tremors from 1990, man. And this film is really dope. It's one yeah. of, it's a creature feature, man. It's kind of one of my favorite genres of horror. I love monsters and stuff like that. And I think this is also elevated just by also having this this uh, dark humor yeah. Um, tone to it as well, man. Yeah. I mean, it is spooky. And I think if you're really young, it could probably freak you out. But for, for the most part, man, yeah. this film comes across as just a fun ride, yeah. you know, with these crazy, wacky characters in this crazy, wacky situation, man. So so let's get into it, man. Yeah, man. I mean, well, for starters, you know what I'm saying? You got to pay homage to the writers of the story. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, S.S. Wilson. I can't remember the other guy's name. But this film came about because they're the ones who actually wrote Short Circuit. And off the success ah, of Short okay, Circuit, okay. They, uh, you know, the powers that be were like, yo, I know you got some other ideas somewhere in the crates. So dig through them. And they actually, um, S.S. Wilson, uh, during his time in the Navy, wrote a small script about... Um, he called it land sharks, and it was pretty much about people that had to, you know, save themselves by staying on rocks because there was something, un, you know, in the mm. in the ground. You know what I'm saying? But when the, when the time came, they had to switch the name because there was an SNL skit that, that <laughs> called, had, land yeah, called land sharks, so they didn't want to <laughs> cause confusion. Yeah, yeah, but friends on, yeah. But what I what I really like about this is is the simplicity of the story, you know, as a whole, because it, it benefits the movie in every way, because what it does is it makes room for the characters to shine and ultimately the graboids to be the stars of the show. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The, the graboids are, I guess, the, the technical name for the tremors in, yeah, the, in the yeah, film. Yeah, that's you know? yeah, that's what they. Um, I think uh, I forgot. Uh, I think Earl made that up. Or the no, it was uh, it was uh, Wilson, uh, oh. the, the store owner. Oh, yo, my man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's my man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's my man uh, from um, Golden Child. Golden you know Child, yeah, the one, the one who it. wipes the booger yeah. in his jacket, You're breaking my heart out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know what? What's really cool too, also, is I like the setup because it kind of takes the couple notes out of how the how jaws starts mm -hmm. the first 20 minutes you get you get this tension building because you see there are bodies popping up there are victims but we don't really know what's you know what's causing the deaths yeah and you I, know, I love the setup with that too because that that kind of comes like you said the build up because mm -hmm. we still don't know what the threat is like, right. like even the clues we get like like one guy's up in a tower basically starved to death and he's got a gun on him so what yeah. could be so bad that a guy that's armed Scared to come down from this tower, and and, and and it's cool because in this scenario, I sympathize with the characters because who would think that the threat is coming from under the ground? Right. You know, in that I'm, situation, I'm not, I wouldn't put that together. Yeah, like, yeah. Know, like, and I mean, and the thing is, it's, it's like we follow these these two handymen, Val and uh, Val and Earl, and and they um they're pretty much they're fed up with this simple living you know what i'm saying in this simple town it's pleasant nevada what a name right or oh, perfection i'm sorry perfection yeah, that is a wild wow name. wild name <laughs> and i mean like i said th th there must be a population of about i don't know 14 to 20 people in this town it's just a big open desert area so when someone goes missing or drops dead everyone notices yeah and uh mm -hmm. so they're on their way they're they're tired of, of this small time living they want to head to the next town i want to say bigsby is something like that probably but, getting closer to reno and yeah more action and, it, and, and, and they just want yeah yeah, they, they, they're just they're just they're fed up. So um, they're on their way no out. Opportunities. Yeah, like, like you said, they they see this guy up in this in the tower, and when they call for the the local doctor to come, they say that he died of dehydration. So that takes four days. So they're like, what the hell keeps somebody up in a tower for four days, scared to come down? So of course they head to I guess what would be considered town. It's uh, the the little market, uh, Wilson's Market or whatever. That's where everybody hang out, and they just want to warn people that. You know, people are yeah, dying. Stuff's going on. Something's happening. People are dying, and yeah. then they they want to make their way out. And by this point, on on their second attempt to leave, then they see that the dude that sells sheep, all his sheep's is dead. He's dead. <laughs> He's dead. And then, then the people the people that was working on the street, they tell them, "Hey man, there's a serial killer on the road. He's chopping people's heads off. Run!" 
They leave. They leave again. They head back to the store to tell everybody, all right, we got a serious problem. On their way out now, the two, two, two road workers are dead, and now the road is blocked off. Yeah. There's only one way in, one way out. Yeah. So, you know. So, oh, I mean, they ultimately run into the seismologists too, They're doing all this. Yeah. And they deduce that that's when they get attacked directly by these creatures, man. But you know, and, and we, you know, we get the threat. You know, the film that everything's based around. So basically, they got to survive. The, these these creatures, man. But what I do like is those previous setups, right? Like you said, the uh, the workers, yeah. Like, and we're getting exposed. We're still not seeing the creature fully. Mm -hmm. We're getting elements exposed, and I love that. Like my man's drilling, and, psh, and he gets hits, and then the blood comes out. Like it has yeah. all the cool creature feature moments. Uh, yeah, those things that I appreciate, man. But but you know, speaking on that though, the, the characters of the film themselves, I think, is really dope here. That help flesh this out because you know we got Earl and Fred and they are perfect, like you said, they're handyman. They're they're hustlers. Basically, yeah. they go out every day to take whatever works available. You know, you got a clock toilet, they probably help you. You got to dig your septic tank. All right, boom, we pick up the porta potty, the porta johns, we clean them out. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's it's grimy work. You know, it's not like they're putting um, fences up, changing trash, yeah. anything, odd jobs yeah. out the wazoo. But when you see this community. It's a self-sufficient community. So, yes. so unless you got a hustle like like my sheep guy, or you run a general store, like even our scientists is being sent here from a university. That's right. how she's getting paid. But but there's really no work in this town. It's a quiet area where people kind of go to disappear. Like uh like Heather and um Heather and, and um, Bert Grummer. Yeah, well, Bert. They, they're just chilling. They, they like it seems like they're retired. This is what they want to do. Yeah. They want to stay in their land and, and shoot guns. You know the, the way <laughs> I think about it is like this is like the same area as like what you would get in the film. The hills have eyes. There's mm -hmm. there's no telephone towers. Um, there's no way to communicate with the outside world or the outside world to communicate with them. They yeah. really, all they have is each other. And even the locals, they're on CB. Yeah. Like, on it's CB. like, yo, that's the and, easiest way, the most efficient way to communicate. Yeah. And, and, and the thing about these cast and these characters is they're all in. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you they're believable in this, mm. this story. And they're what really elevate this film. Cause I mean, it, like you said, with, when it comes to Val and Earl, you know, what I like about them most is their banter. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like this, this relationship that they have, you can tell they're hooked at the hip. They're friends. They ride for each other and everything. Almost like you, you, you kind of lose sight. Like, are they friends or are they brothers? Cause they act like yeah. both. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and they, they really do, uh, they do carry this film, but it's the, the side characters that really just mm -hmm. to bring this other energy. Like you said, like, what what you get from the scientist in in Rhonda? What I like best about her is that, like in a film like The Thing, right? Mm -hmm. Your scientists they find there there reaches a point where they figure out what's going on and they try to warn everybody about what's going on. Whereas this, yeah. she never figures out what's going on. She's figuring it out as, as it goes as yeah. it goes with the other characters. <laughs> She's like, I mean, the only thing that we know at this moment is. You know that they they're under the ground and they go off vibrations and and you know Ooh. thing and then people are dying so we need to just you know we're in survival mode but the 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 two characters that that really just kind of are uh, above all in in my mind are the gummers that's uh that's uh what is it uh Reba McIntyre and um Michael Gross mm -hmm. that's Bert uh, Bert and um I, I can't remember her name Heather. but Heather yeah, yeah Bert and Heather Gummer and these, <laughs> these 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 are like your your survivalist preppers you know what I'm saying the ones that everybody thinks that they're kind of offbeat, a little crazy until shit hits the fan. Then they're the ones that everybody wants to ram. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, cause, cause they, yeah, they're li like I say, they're living this. They seem to be just a retired couple, day to day, spending their time in isolation, hunting and shooting their guns. But but I will say overall, I think that's what elevates this film, man. You see films like this done now, and it's like the character is secondary. Like those yeah. moments. They're just ignoring that to get to the next big visual spectacle. And I think that's a detriment to, to films that are trying to tip this formula in this day and age. Like, like this formula, man, it's A1. Like, like I said, the premise and everything in it, and it's elevated because they took the care in dealing with the smaller stuff. Well, and also, you know, which, which is the characters and their interactions, man. And they're, the, they're, the, they feel fully formed. The characters, they lead with their personalities. It is, it is a, a hodgepodge of, of different personalities. But because this setup is, is in this population is so small, it gives us time to get, you know, acquainted with and then also have a personal like attachment to each one of the characters. Yeah. We don't want to see nothing happen to none of them, but we know everyone's not going to make it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, also, I think that's really dope. Like this is a what hour, 35 minutes. Yeah. 
And even with all that character development, stuff's happening. Like, yeah. like the, the, the Graboid stuff is happening before we even still know. We're still getting those Jaws-type moments where, you know, people are getting stalked by this thing that we haven't seen yet. Like, And, and, and it's cool. And it, it all builds up to the mm-hmm. overall tension and, <coughs> and yeah. impact like, that this film has, you know? Especially, like, when they're in the thick of it. One of my favorite parts is where the, the, the Gummers, they're like... You know, they're like, man, y'all are tripping, man. We're leaving the store. We're going back to our, our, our home. And they're in their basement. And their basement is decked out. I mean, decorated with guns out of the wazoo on the walls and everything. And one of the Graboids breaks into the wall and they just unload on mm-hmm. this thing. I mean, yeah. they, I, they shooting it with everything <laughs> under the sun. They end up killing it with an elephant gun, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> yeah, which is crazy. <laughs> which is because wild. I watched that scene too, man. He's loading these slugs that are big as your thumb. Yes. And, 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 and he's shooting this thing without the thing braced on his shoulder no there's report. no way bro that thing no. would have just blew no. right out of his hands <laughs> no. if he shot it like that <laughs> but, that, but, but it's fun man it's a the, really fun scene testament man. to the personality though is after mm-hmm. they after all all the smoke clears and everything he looks at the grab boy Bert does he was like yeah broke into the wrong rec room didn't you <laughs> it's like man you know yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that it, it's a bit that is a wild scene man. yeah yeah so you know and then i mean can't talk about this film without talking about the graboids themselves like they are to this film what jaws is to the ocean in that movie and you know what what really separates this film from other films that have sandworms in it is these these worms are really smart for starters like the way that they hunt um their prey they really they put a lot of emphasis into the fact that as they're as the movie progresses they're learning different ways to try to to hunt them like at first it's just off the vibrations and that's mm-hmm. you know, obviously the, that's their 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 sensory uh, trigger but as the people are fighting for their lives and they start you know putting themselves up on roof uh, building rooftops and, and and rocks and all these things the, they start to like hunt almost like like pack animals trying to find ways to bring down the buildings or you know popping the tires in the vehicles and things like that which yeah. that just shows a level of intelligence that I thought was just really really smart and I love the fact that the makers of this movie went the extra mile to separate the graboids from the worm from doom you know what I mean? That that had to be done for this film to be this successful. This is a much cooler worm than me, man. Yeah. I, I like the design of it. it, it in fact, it looks like a looks like a banana slug on crack mixed with the Terminator and Jurassic Park because it's like a you know it has a design. It looks like a flattened out potato, but on the yeah. end, it's also got a beak, which is pretty cool. Like it's hard. I guess that's you know, the, but it opens then, then it like a flower. To, yeah, it uses yeah. that beak to dig through the ground, and then it opens the mouth. It's almost like a three way mouth. It opens up, and then it has these grabbers. These, that's where the grab boy comes at yeah, you. They're yeah. like tentacles that, that almost they, like Medusa's head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tentacles that can grab you in and pull you through the mouth. And and, and and it's a cool design for enemy. You got these spikes on it that it said it helps pull itself through the ground with. And also, I love when we get those underground shots later yes. of it moving through the ground like it's pulling. yes. It, it's, it's a yes. cool thing. It, like like it does look like a a land shark in effect. It's almost like yes. they're swimming through the dirt underneath in a right. land. And it's just cool, man. It's a it's a cool kind of predator, cool kind of enemy design. It's, it's like it's like yeah, it could come up under you under the ground and pull you in, and you never see him, you know, leaving no trace. And, and boom, man, well, it's, it's it's cool, man. It's really cool. Another thing that I like is you know they 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 pay attention to the element that the grab boys are in. Like they're not mm-hmm. all shiny; they look dry yeah, and dusty. Dirty, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where, it's, it's, where a lot looks, of times they look like the dusty ass Nevada that we're yeah. seeing. Like it's not. And see, and this was know? this was a complete opposite side of the spectrum for the um the special effects creators because they were the ones who worked on Aliens, mm. where those those were slimy and just dripping. You know goo everywhere where whereas these they thought that it would be a much better idea like how is something that's swimming through the desert mm-hmm. sand going to yeah. be slimy no, it's you know be, what i mean i mean the, the mouth is slimy inside there's a little bit of drippy gooey when they get blasted and, yeah. and stuff so and also I like the fact too they, they every time the characters emphasize that these things stink they stink <laughs> they stink more alive than dead yes and you know just to clear up confusion so i brought my my dvd this is what they have them look like okay and i was like that yeah, i was I thinking like, in my that head dvd is not accurate though this, like that that you know what that is that is accurate that's the mouth that's, that's the grabby that's part that's the grabby part yeah that's yeah, not the, that's, that's what i was about to say it's, it's a close-up yeah. on the grabby yeah, part yeah. but the, the actual worm 
does not look like that. And then it's funny because I was just, you know, just me being me. So I brought, tremors, I found this size figure. chart for those that are wondering about sandworms. The graboid is second. The, 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 on 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 the on the chart. So the biggest worm about, is it. What do you think the size? Maybe 25, 30 feet long, give or take. Yeah. yeah so yeah. so it obviously the dune worm is the biggest, and then they say that the Beetlejuice sandworm is slightly bigger than the graboid, and then of course the the worm yeah, from the dune is like a, a train. Bro. That's, like, That's like exactly a red line, bro. exactly. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but, maybe even bigger than that, like twice as big. Like yeah. Like, but you know, and it's and it's really cool that you know how how they they come to to learn about the graboids as a whole by having this seismologist there in Rhonda. Like she's just she's just measuring the like almost looking for like earthquakes out mm-hmm. there, and, yeah. and you know, so that's how you know yeah. it all comes about. It's interesting because there's a cool moment um, after when they're on the rocks, and um, and she says her thing went off, and all, and I I, I realized it right when rewatching it. Like seeing her, you know, the light go off in her head. She's like, "Hold up!" And she goes and looks and like, "Yo, I had several readings simultaneously." So that means there's more than one of these things. That's not just mm-hmm. one. And she's like, "Yeah, from what I could tell, there's four of these joints yeah. here." Like, and I'm like, "Yo, this is crazy." And you know, another thing that really enhances just the the graboid as a whole is the set pieces that we get. You know, this this open landscape in the desert. Like, it does does a couple things for me. One. This whole, even though this film turns into a full-on siege film about halfway through, oh, I love that it's an too. open area. Normally, mm-hmm. your siege films are in tight, condensed, small spaces. They like, they like too. I mean, and I think that works. Great a horror for this film, film in daylight. Yes, mm-hmm. that 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 is also that is amazing. And you know the 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 fact that you know they 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 take the time to give us these these wide landscapes, these long camera angles and everything it just it really enhances what we're getting from the graboids yeah. as a whole this is thing is all flavor man mm-hmm. like, even like you said speaking of set pieces like even right there where the where the it was chasing um earl and um and, and it hits the the, the concrete barrier the, yeah. the one and, and, and kills itself and just looking at that it's sitting there it's a physical thing that they built and constructed even on the back on the other side of the wall where you see the tail end yeah. is dug out around and, and it's just it's just cool to or, see that there that there acting against like the physical presence of this thing it's yeah. not you know they're not acting on the screen that they, they can touch it, it that they're playing it, with pieces of it or like the part where they're they're stranded on the rocks and they actually have the wear for all to start pole vaulting from rock to rock it shows it's like you know it's a battle of wits it's almost like it's, it's chess not checkers you know what i'm saying when it comes to trying to survive these things because you know the, between the the group of humans and the graboids they're constantly trying to one up you know like the graboids, yeah. they want their food, and of course the people they want to live. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a fun film, man. Like, um, it's a film that didn't do that great at the box office. But, no, but when you look at what they squeeze out of this budget, was this like a ten million dollar budget? Ten million dollar budget. Yeah. They and pulled back sixteen mil box probably, office. They probably got fifty million from sales or rentals uh, over the years. But it said that this film led the '90s. Led the '90s mm-hmm. in VHS rentals and um, and VHS purchases, yeah. but like just looking like what they were able to pull out of it, like just with this clever imagination of design, like like even early later on, um, you know during the siege part, there, there's a scene where the graboid, uh, the scientist, she's running and it grabs her, her pants get tangled up in a barbed wire, and then you see the thing lift up a chunk of the um, fence up and it's mm-hmm. crunching it, and I'm like, yo, this is really cool what they were able to do with a budget like this dude and yeah. then to pull this off and give you this destruction this this, yes. this inventiveness with the character the design even when they're fighting with the the, the tentacles and wrapping up the characters and they're punching them and shooting them they're, they're, they're clawing at their clothing yeah. that stuff looks really it still looks good to this yes day, and, and the thing is is also like like you said on a minimal budget mm-hmm. they give maximum effort and it translates on screen like yeah. one of one of the things um that i saw i was watching um a little bit of like the special effects work that was done uh because i got the special edition dvd and it shows you how like them building the graboids and such at the very end the last graboid that goes and falls through the mountain and and, and dies that was a little miniature set you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, and, it, it and, looked like it. And, and a little miniature worm and everything. Yeah. And, it, it's, and, it's and, cool because 
with that, it doesn't break anything. Like it no. looks like it's not like it's um drawn over the screen later. No. It's you see this it's, model actually come through this hole yes. and fall down in and one uncut shot. It's, it's not crazy. it's not green screen. This is practical effects at its finest. You know what I'm saying? And like, or even like a part where uh, the part where um the the graboid comes in through the bottom of the store and uh, and eats Wilson. Mm -hmm. Like they said, dude, they only had about the the it was like the top. 30% of the Graboid made mm -hmm. and eight people had it on like this like almost like a, a big wagon and they were all just pushing as fast as they yeah. could to get it to break through and then there was a bicycle seat inside of the Graboid so you know Wilson could sit down comfortably the actor and, yeah. and still give us what we get translated on screen mm -hmm. I mean this is just I mean they were so inventive you know what I'm saying creative with with what they had to work with and yeah. that's why i think this film does have a large cult mm -hmm. following and you know even though it didn't hit as heavy in the theaters you know what i'm saying that i mean you know of course you want you want to you want to skyrocket at the box office but if you can turn around and yeah. flip and uh, off rentals or, yeah. or vhs sales then cool and you know, that's still cool. a win i think I don't know how that works in this era, and it sucks because companies yeah. never put the numbers out. Yeah. I always wonder sometimes when something in this era doesn't hit so hard in the theaters, what do the rental um, uh, numbers look like? What do the sales per I still buy films digitally sometimes, yeah. you know, if I catch a good deal, um, you know, and, and building that library up like that. But we don't know because they don't put these numbers out, and I think doing that might help, you know, yeah. <laughs> help people know what's what. But um, let me ask you this though. So, um, I will say this thing did spawn a rack of sequels. There's like Fought. seven and five. a TV show. Yeah, and, it's, <laughs> and you know what? I found out about the TV show later. But, but I will say this: I do remember watching the sequel to this and enjoying yes. it a lot because yes. the only difference is we don't have Kevin Bacon and um. Um, and that one he didn't come back. Um, but um, and then the the the, but, the, um, the tremors changed a little bit. It was the screamers, and then in the third one, it, it, there was something called like. But I did like that though. So, yeah. but but then um, Bert is the main character that we follow in the uh, second one. I think um, I think Earl Michael is still there. Earl is in it. Yeah. Bert is in. Then yeah. the third one is just Bert. And um, and Bert has uh, monetized this thing, but it's cool. So the grab boys come back, but they also um. um Chains. There's like another yeah. form to them, which, yeah. like you said, the screamers. They, they almost look like Mausers from the old Ninja Turtles cartoon. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and and running around like like it's crazy. To man. me, I think that's also just the the art of storytelling. Because in the first one, we see that they never really establish where these things came from. Yeah. They 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 say, oh, it could be a UFO. Oh, it could be a, a science experiment gone wrong. They could have been dropped here. They could mm -hmm. be some kind of prehistoric thing. But leaving it open-ended just makes it that much easier to create sequels. And then in the sequels, having the, the monster evolve in different ways, giving us <laughs> different variations of it, yeah. just makes it that much more um, entertaining uh, for the franchise yeah. as a whole. You know yeah. what I mean? I think that's where my viewing stopped, though. I didn't see any ones after that. I, have, I, I did haven't seen it after three. I did I enjoy the part three. two, though. I will say that. Yes. I had a good time with that. Yes. Um, and yeah, yeah. So um, anything else um, we want to mention on this? Um, while it's... <laughs> nah, I mean, you know, I mean, like I said, uh, I was telling you earlier before we started, you know what I'm saying? This was just, a, this was a really good pool. I think that, you know, this film is just, this is, this is entertainment popcorn Ooh. film at its, at its yeah, finest. It's finest, dude. You know like, what I mean? To be honest, like, man. It's, you get 90 minutes of adrenaline. It's, it's really, it's really fun. Um, at times it's relatable due to the, the character elements. And like I said, with them putting their personalities on the forefront, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's somebody that everybody can find relatable in some kind of way. And then also, you know, films where you just are thrown into a chaos, crisis mm -hmm. kind of situations like it makes you wonder what would i do how would i react you know what i'm saying <laughs> would, I would, would i be the mm -hmm. one that tucks and run or would i you know when i would i chest out and 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 fight for survival and and, and this film it gives you all of that all wrapped mm -hmm. around with this kind of this score that keeps it kind of lighthearted and charming in a sense where it's it's yeah. not it's not you never really feel Super scared. You don't. It's, nah, just, you it's, don't. it's, like, it's an yeah. adventure film in so, a sense. So with ninety, I would be twelve mm -hmm. watching this, and and I wasn't terribly scared. Yeah. It was it was more of a fun ride, especially when you've got the jokes in there. Like like yes. a lot of like that kind of sets a tone in a way. It's like all right, there are some scary moments, but this is supposed to be more of an adventure. I look at this more of an adventure film with some. Yes. The only thing that I've found really horror was some of the gore stuff, but. 
you know, you take away that, and, and it, it just plays like a, an adventure film. That, yeah. like, they're on a the run. They're trying to survive. It didn't come across... Like, I feel like regular comedy, I mean, horror will play this more straight up. There's no jokes involved. They're dying, like, horrible deaths. Yes. A lot more gore with the deaths. But, Blood everywhere. But it seems for this film, the most of the gore came from the creature itself getting jacked up. Like, yeah. like as they were fighting back. It just has, like, like I said, man, there's a vibe to this film that's hard to duplicate. And, and, yes. and, and I don't see many films approaching this i would like to see more films tackle this tone maybe i'll do a deeper dive later and just try to find films that match this energy that are more you know fun this is a comedy yep. horror and uh, with a bigger emphasis on the comedy absolutely you know, oh one thing i must point out too. creature effects you know so during my rewatches this week i watched this with my daughter this was her first crack at it and one thing that she just got a big kick out of is every time <laughs> val and earl were indecisive about who had to do something they broke out the paper rock scissors Ooh. and that's something that me and her do on a regular basis you know what I'm saying? <laughs> who's doing dishes tonight shoot them up you know so that was just that was just really funny oh, you know it's just like you said just adds to the lightheartedness of Ooh. Of this crazy situation that we're getting on screen, but anyone who hasn't seen it, I would yeah, strongly man. suggest check this out. Check this this out. You yeah. know, if you want to dive into the whole franchise, do it at your own risk. Um, <laughs> like I said, I tapped out after the third one, yeah. but this one um, is definitely a, a notch above everything that we get from the rest of the films in the fan franchise. Mm-hmm. It sets the tone, and its entertainment value is top it's notch. Got high, man, Re- Revo McIntyre shooting um, semi-automatics. Come on, son. yeah, this is crazy, bro. This 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 is one of them ones. Like I said, like Bob said, if you ain't seen it, check it out. If you've seen it before and haven't watched it in a long while, watch it again. It still holds up, man. Yes, this it thing does. is great, man. This yes, is it what, does. This reminds me. Of, this is one of the films that made me. A big movie fan, man. Seeing right. something like this in the theater back in the day, it's just great, man. It also gives me an idea of how these theaters could make some more money, man. Put things like this, rerun them. Yes. It's charges like five bucks, man. Throw some merch in it to make it interesting for the people that come out. Yes. Maybe you get a little cool poster or a little graboid squeezy toy. Yo, you can make yes. that toy. Yes. Think about it. You can squeeze it. And yeah. Maybe tentacles like this, come out. Yeah. Like, a little, yeah. Like, a little rubber you know? th- yeah, yeah. Exactly. Come no, on, man. And, you know, and that's, that's a great idea. Would they need to bring back? I mean, of course, inflation is a motherfucker, but it won't be a 99 cent. But like you said, mm-hmm. a five dollar movie and you just play vintage films. Yeah. There's yeah. got to be, you know, uh, abandoned movie houses throughout the the, the area, mm-hmm. regardless of the area you live in, somewhere that could you know could get reno- yeah it could get renovated like, like, and, and just uptick it and that be your flow or yeah, yeah just I mean instead of having unused screens you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying throw a couple vintage films on there there is a market for it there is a fan base for it you can you can do break it down by genre or whatever mm-hmm. the case you know there's a lot of things that could be done people just got to put their thinking caps on and don't be afraid to execute yeah man but I think that's it folks man we can wrap this up. Make sure you go see Tremors, man, you know? And yeah. I would recommend Tremors too as well, man. But also make sure you subscribe, you know, to the channel. Like, man, leave comments. We definitely appreciate those comments. Yes, they help do. us get recognized higher in the YouTube um, algorithm, you know what I'm saying? So do that for us. Mm-hmm. Make sure you check us out on Instagram at Classics of Cinematics. And you can catch me at Monkey Blood on Twitter and Instagram. And this is Bobby Blockbuster. You can catch me on the next show. <laughs> All right, folks, man. We out of here. Mm-hmm. Peace. Oh.